Praise the Lord. We give God thanks for another beautiful month, the month of October. Wow, God has been good from January through to October. Wow, when we give God praise. And over the last few months, we've been interacting on all manner of issues. And this man, somebody said, I don't want peace. I want problem. But God did. Don't worry. We are with you. Let us pray. Father, we give you honor and glory for life. We bless you for the goodness that you bestow. We ask, O oh God, that you teach us your word and let us be built for you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, what are we talking about in this month? You see, lately, some kind of development that are going on among Christians, in fact, the general populace, is the issue of alcoholism. People drinking excessively, and it's so interesting. Well, I, I am not too grown, but when I was young, you often would find men rather taking alcohol, but these days, go for funerals. And the women are the ones introduce the men, <laughs> introducing the men to the best alcoholic beverages are in town. It's so interesting, eh? And the way we take alcohol these days, you want to wonder. It is for this reason that we want to focus on this month on some issues related to alcohol and being Christian. And so let's start off today's uh, what you call deliberations on the subject the Christian and alcohol. Generally, what does the Bible say? What are the Christian traditions with regard to alcohol? Mm. <laughs> we are started. Right. So you see, generally the Bible contains several references to alcohol. Some, it talks about wine, strong wine, fermented beverages, and all kinds of things. And these passages are usually linked to one celebration or the other. And sometimes it gets so interesting and, forgive me, confusing as to what to do, which way to go, what exactly is the biblical position. And <laughs> this is even more interesting because, you see, some denominations accept it. Other denominations, like the Methodists, say that, no, we are tea tellers. We don't take alcohol. But some other churches also embrace it wholeheartedly. And others, like the Pentecostals and Charismatics, some of them, oh, <laughs> they are also very apprehensive when it comes to alcohol. So you are not sure what the Christian perspective or what the Bible really wants to say when it comes to alcohol. You see, historically from the Bible, if you take from Jewish uh, traditions, you realize that alcohol consumption was a usual and a normal thing among the Jews. So the Jews would have alcohol at various celebrations. It's not the way they celebrate. Eh? Sometimes when it's wedding, they take a whole week and all kinds of drunk. I'm sure you may have watched some of these medieval, uh, what do you call, videos about uh, how they celebrate the wins of battles and other stars. Weddings and sometimes funerals and all of that. They take a lot of alcohol. And sometimes, even in scripture, if you read Leviticus, some of the things that you actually have to bring to the temple will include wine. And so you're like, okay, if you live in the temple and bring you wine, why not? And again, you know that uh, it is recorded that in Jesus' first miracle, he changed water into wine. Mm. <laughs> so people find such passages as trying to say that it is good. And so mm, it's fine. There's nothing wrong. Again, remember the case of Noah in Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 to 21. Noah is said to have uh, what you call drunk to the extent that he slept ajar. <laughs> he slept ajar. He slept and unknowingly the way he slept, uh, I mean, things were showing. <laughs> and his daughters went to see it. You see, he lost control of himself. And it was rather interesting. We have talked about the Jesus' example. Again, some people also say that, well, in the case of Paul, he advises Peter, uh, uh, Timothy, sorry, in 1 Timothy 5, verse 23, 1 Timothy 5, verse 23, that no longer drink water exclusively, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. Now, this verse has also been taken as, oh, God is for it, and so we can go ahead and do it. But what I'm asking is, is that the totality of Scripture? Is that all that the Bible say about alcohol? Are those the, all the instances we have in scripture that says that you may bring it, you may take it, you can take it in moderation or whatever? No, that cannot be it. Because scripture is clear. Do not be drunk with wine wherein excess. 
There's a problem, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the biblical injunction. That is the New Testament. That is the Christian injunction. Because the fact of the matter is that, you see, when we are interpreting scripture, we must look at it holistically. In the case of Noah, which is a classic example, anybody who has taken wine will lose control over his, uh, what you call, senses. And so you see somebody who is... <laughs> Behind the big gutter, and then that person will tell you, Oh, this one, I will jump it easily. I will jump it easily. By the time you realize he's falling into the gutter, tongue, say, Ma, I have already jumped it. He doesn't even know that he's falling. Because you lose control over your senses and you're unable to manage yourself. And so, why do it? When nobody did it, he, it ended him in a serious consequence where his own daughter, his own daughter, came and saw his nakedness. People of God, would you want to do that? Is that consequence any good? In the case of Timothy, I mean, <laughs> he should take a little wine because of his. Because yes, we appreciate that wine is medicinal. It is medicinal, and so if you have to take it, but look, you the alcohol that you are taking, which doctor prescribed it for you? I get worried when some people say that. Oh, <laughs> in time past we used to sell Guinness in the drugstore. Oh, whoa. A word today, you buy this from there. I mean, we doctor prescribed it for you. It is medicinal. The body needs a level of alcohol. Yes, but is that what you are supposed to do as Christian? Like I've told you, scripture is clear. Do not be filled with wine. Conclusive. We don't have to be filled with wine. And so we have to take control. And we need to be careful of the issue of alcohol as Christians. I want to put the bricks over here. Next week, we'll go deep. Just take your time and think through the impact that alcohol is making on people. And the Lord will bless and keep us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We bless you that you are with us and you constantly abide with us. We pray that as we have entered into a new month, may you lead us on and preserve us. In the month of October, may we be victorious in everything that we think, think or day. And your might will be felt amongst us. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord lift his face upon The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you. And grant you his peace now and always in all the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye. I'll see you. Join us next week and you'll be a blessing. Bye.